what do you wear when you're cooking Thanksgiving dinner? Because I know for those of you who are out there, the chefs in the house, that's always an issue. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kim. I'm the host behind She Cleans Up Nicely. And today we're talking about what to wear for Thanksgiving. More specifically, what do you wear when you're cooking Thanksgiving dinner? Because I know for those of you who are out there, the chefs in the house, that's always an issue. Like what do we put on our body while we're cooking Thanksgiving dinner? Now, before we get started, let me just put the disclaimer out there. Real talk, what do I wear when I'm cooking dinner for Thanksgiving? Mostly this, right? Sweatpants, a t-shirt, socks or maybe some slippers, you know, something easy to throw on, fast, quick. I don't care if it gets dirty, that's what I'm gonna put on. But the issue becomes when people start coming over and you're still cooking. Now, if you're not like me and you're not cooking when people are over and you actually cooked everything and everything's already, then this probably isn't the video for you. But if you are like me and you're still cooking and people are coming in the house and you wanna look presentable while you're cooking those last minute things, this is the video for you. These are a few items that I pulled out of my closet, nothing new, just some things that I thought that I would give you as context of types of items that I would wear if I was cooking for Thanksgiving, which I will be cooking for Thanksgiving, but the only people who are gonna be here are my kids, so I don't know that we'll be doing the most as far as getting dressed, but you never know, because your girl likes to get dressed. It's always a moment, right? We always wanna take, take up on the moment to get dressed. Anywho. So I do have my handy dandy little iPad here. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm going through, I wanna make sure that I'm talking to the right um, images while I'm doing this. Y'all know that I'm still new to this YouTube thing. So give your girl some grace while I figure this joint out. But let's get into some of the things that I would and or wouldn't wear if I was cooking Thanksgiving dinner this year. All right, first up, we've got dresses right so I've got a yellow dress it's sleeveless it's got cap sleeves it gives me a little a uh, pop of color as far as the yellow is concerned now if you're not a bright yellow person that's fine but it gives us room to move around in right that's what we need as chefs in the kitchens we need something that's going to give us space to move around that's not going to be constricting and it's not going to get in the way now for another dress that I wouldn't wear now, although leopard print is one of my faves and you can never honestly go wrong with leopard print. However, in this moment, this particular leopard print dress, she has to she has to have be put on pause because she's doing she's really cute and she's doing the most with her sleeves and with the cinched waist and with the neckline but when we're cooking she's doing a little bit too much like I can't have stuff all up on my neck I'm going to be sweating the sleeves are going to be all in the food and in the way the the length of the dress although very cute prim and proper is not the most um how do we say flattering to be bending over to get pots and pans and doing all of the things right so you want to be thinking about the length of the garment that you're going to put on when you're getting dressed in order to go do your thanksgiving cooking because we don't want to flash all of the people while they're you know sitting at their sitting at the counter talking to you while you're doing what you need to do cooking and you're giving them a show and a show in the wrong way so Although this dress is cute, this is not exactly the type of dress that you should be wearing in order to cook Thanksgiving dinner. Next up, I have a little black dress. Now I know every single one of y'all got a little black dress of some sort in your wardrobe. Now the question is, what type of little black dress will I wear to cook in? One, I love black because it does not show all of the stains if it does get dirty, right? Versus maybe a brighter color if some gravy splashes up or splashes down because you have on an apron, right? If, a, if it splashes, it wouldn't be as noticeable. So a little black dress or anything black will always be one of the things that I would grab for, but not necessarily the thing that I would grab for. But a little black dress, one that 
gives us a little neckline, right? One that has our arms that are freeing, one that allows movement and space, whether it has elasticity, of course, um, or it's more free flowing. Those are all great options. You know, you have to pick and choose the length of the type of dress that you want, whether you want it to be a shorter length or a longer length. Now, I would not recommend this type of dress, right? So this dress is my black and white. It's what I wear to work or maybe I will wear it to church. Um, I love the way it looks. I will wear it to Thanksgiving dinner, but I wouldn't wear it to cook Thanksgiving dinner in because it, it's too constricting, right? It doesn't allow me free motion to move in. And that's just my personal preference. Now, if you're good with having on tight constricted clothes while you're cooking, be my guest, right? But for me, I like stuff that moves, that gives me the ability to be able to move around the kitchen because I'm always on the go. Like a pot, a pan, a dish that y'all know. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about, right? So if you want something that is going to allow that free mov movement, you definitely want to keep in mind when you are picking out your dress, right? So I also have this dress, which is off the shoulder, gives us some elasticity in the waistline. We want to be able to move from the kitchen to the dining room table so that when we eat, we can still look cute, be cute, and expand as our stomachs expand because we all know that we about to get it in because Thanksgiving is coming, right? The food is coming. And that is one meal that I will eat after I actually cook it. Thanksgiving dinner, that's, I gotta have it. Like, when I do a lot of cooking, sometimes I don't eat after I cook as the chef. However, I do love to sit down and have Thanksgiving dinner as a meal with my family. And so I want to be able to be cute and expand when necessary. So we want our clothes to be able to expand with us. Now right? that we've gone through dresses, let's move on to skirts, right? Um, I love a good maxi skirt. A good maxi skirt will take us good places. It gives us free range of motion, right? It gives us the drama, it gives us the length. I love a good deep color. Pair it with whatever top of your liking. I paired this with a sheer top that I've had in my closet. All of these pieces I've had in my closet forever, but I paired this with a sheer moment that gives me the ability to breathe. So if I'm sweating, like nobody's really going to be able to see that. Um, it gives me the flexibility to get some air flow going, right? Because we're in that hot kitchen and it's not giving like uberly sexy, but yet we're still having a moment for the leopard print and we're still having a moment for the sheer and we still get to get some air, right? Next, I have the pleated skirt. This skirt has been trending for a moment. So if you have one in your closet, feel free to whip it out and throw it on for Thanksgiving. This is cream. Now I will say, I don't really know if I'm being honest that I would wear a cream skirt to cook in because I am a messy cook. But if I had this skirt in black, which I don't, I only have a faux leather skirt in black and we're gonna get to faux leather in a little bit. But I brought this out just as an example for you to see like a monochrome moment in a free flowing skirt that has elastic waistband with a shirt that gives some give. It's a moment, right? A monochrome moment is always a moment. The free fluidity of the skirt is a moment. The pleats are a moment. Like the whole thing is a moment. And when we are cooking as the host, we still want to be able to make a statement. If people are coming in, we wanna be cute, we wanna be presentable, you wanna be the hostess with the mostest. So being sure that your outfit speaks volumes for you and shows that you are that chick, you know how we do around here. We still need to be that chick. Just because we're cooking doesn't mean that we're not gonna be that chick. When folks walk through the door, we need to be that chick. And the pleated skirt, she's a moment and she will allow you to be that chick. So for a skirt that I definitely wouldn't wear while I was cooking, faux leather. So earlier I talked, I touched on faux leather just a little bit. I would not wear faux leather in the kitchen, period. Shirt, pants, skirt, dress, like faux leather is hot. 
it is going to like trap the heat inside of your body and you are going to be on fire. So I really don't recommend wearing a faux leather skirt or faux leather pants um, when it comes to getting dressed because of that exact reason, right? Because it's already hot and it's going to, you're gonna be in a hot kitchen wearing hot clothes. And when I mean hot, I mean like the temperature is literally rising. Like we don't want to be sweating and, and feel overwhelmed and feel like we're about to pass out because we're in the kitchen cooking. We want to be cute and comfortable and preferably we want to have enough airflow going through our clothes that will allow us to do just that. And faux leather is not that garment. Another easy breezy outfit combination to wear is a two-piece set. So I know that you guys probably have a gazillion two-piece sets in your wardrobe. So just go pick one that's a no-brainer, that doesn't have a lot of foo-foo sleeves that are billowy, like we want something that is sleeveless, short sleeve, something that is not going to be constricted, and something that allows you to move freely. Preferably something with elastic around the waist so that you're quote unquote comfortable. I know you guys love the word comfortable. You can still be comfortable and cute and not be in sweats. Y'all know I say that all of the time. Comfort is a state of mind and that includes when it's cooking. Now the key to cooking Thanksgiving dinner and being cute is to make sure that your garments allow you to do that. Your outfit should make a statement but be functional, right? We need fashion and function, not just fashion. <laughs> we need garments that are not gonna have extra billowy sleeves. We need garments that are not gonna be constricting. We need garments that allow you to move freely, allow you to bend over however it is from the knees or from the waist. Yes, you should be bending at the knees, but that's not always how we bend over when we're in the kitchen. If, any, if you're anything like me, you just literally bend over, grab a pot, and put it on the stove. Nobody's thinking about being prim and proper when we're cooking, right? Things that have our decolletage open and airy, you know, light breezy fabrics that are going to allow air to move through and allow movement with our fabrics. Those are the types of garments that I'm going to wear when I'm cooking. Now... Silk will align to all of those um, characteristic traits that I just stated, but I would not wear silk to be cooking because of the nature of the garment and it stains easily and they're expensive. Like I'm not cooking in silk, but we would like something that is light and breezy and airy. So say like just a lightweight cotton shirt or say a um, mesh shirt like I showed you earlier or something that just allows a lot of free movement but it's not going to be overly expensive or something that you feel like you would potentially cry or be highly upset with if you got a stain on it. Those are the things that we're not gonna wear, right? We're gonna wear the things that if something did happen to it, you wouldn't like lose your whole mind about it, but you would be a little upset because you still wanna be cute. Like, now, a jumpsuit is a great article to wear for Thanksgiving because it's one and done. It doesn't take any thought. Usually it's a one-piece garment. I'm usually. It is a one-piece garment that you don't even have to think about. You just put it on your body and it's done. The most you may need to do is put on some accessories and maybe a belt. While we're cooking, we're not going to be wearing any belts because we don't need anything that's constrictive. We need stuff that's going to allow us to move around freely. But after you finish cooking, after you, you know, you're done and you're ready to eat, if you want to put on a belt, be my guest. But a jumpsuit is a great way to just throw something on with little thought. Again, you want to be cognizant of the length. So if it's super long, that's not the jumpsuit that we want to put on. But if it's of a length that actually, you know, hits where it's supposed to hit and you could just throw your slippers on, throw on some, maybe some lumberjack socks. I tend to either cook barefoot in lumberjack socks or in slippers. I need to be comfortable when I'm cooking. So I don't know about y'all. Y'all can let me know in the comments. What do you cook in when you like, as far as shoes are concerned, when you're cooking, let me know in the comments what you guys wear. But I tend to wear slippers, I'm barefoot or lumberjack socks. But when it comes to the length of the garment, you don't want it to be like something that you're going to be tripping over, right? Um, for my jumpsuits, also, if you have something that makes a statement, that's always a great piece because it's one done statement worthy. Everybody's going to compliment you. Oh my God, I love that print. It looks so nice on you. Like 
We want things that don't require a lot of thought, but still are very impactful and still functional. Y'all know I love a good pant moment. So if we're gonna talk about pants, which we are, let's talk about them. One, every woman has a pair of black pants in their wardrobe, right? So it's a no brainer. If you wanna wear just a simple pair of black slacks, you wanna wear all black, you wanna wear black with a statement, you could wear you know, black in anything. Black in virtually any color top is gonna go together. That will allow you to feel comfortable it will allow you to get, to eat at the dinner table and not feel like you're gonna look like you're 300 pounds when you raise up off the table because you just ate all of that food. Um, and while you're cooking, it's gonna make you help you look slim and trim as well because it, I, don't judge me, I make my sweet potato pies first and then I eat a sweet potato pie while I'm cooking. I usually take down at least one sweet potato pie before I even get to the dinner table. <laughs> Don't judge me, I said this is a judgment-free zone. All right, so while I'm cooking and eating, I still need to be cute and look cute while I'm cooking and eating because my stomach is expanding all throughout the day into the night, right? And we need to be cute throughout the whole experience. So a good black pant will never lead you wrong. However, a good monochrome colored moment is also a moment, right? Whether it's a wide leg pant or maybe a skinny pant, a monochrome moment is always going to make a statement. So, you know, you pick and choose your poison. I will say when it comes to pants, right? Because you know your girl loves pants. I do. I wear pants all of the time. I wear jeans, whatever the case may be. But when it comes to cooking and you pick out your shirt, you definitely want to be very cognizant of the type of shirts that you pick. You don't want like off the shoulder shirts that when you raise up your arms, it's gonna come up off your shoulders because then you're always gonna be fiddling. You don't want shirts that are gonna have all of these billowy sleeves that again are may potentially get in the way or you can't pull them up because they're not built that way. You don't want stuff that's gonna be all up your neck because you're gonna be sweating, you're gonna be irritated. Like it's cute, but it's not cute to cook in. So just be cognizant when you are getting dressed of the type of shirts that you're picking out and the type of pants that you're picking out. Because again, back to my statement earlier about the faux leather skirt, you also don't want to wear faux leather pants. They're hot, they're gonna trap the heat, they're gonna make you sweat excessively, and we don't need to sweat any more than we're already sweating because we're already in the kitchen with a hot ass oven. So why do we need to add more heat in the kitchen? You're hot enough, boo, you're hot enough. Oh, and going back to the black pant, these are a pair of black, my favorite black jeans. They are super comfortable. And if you are a jeans girl, they don't have to be black. You can wear blue, you can wear black, you can wear whatever color jeans you want. I probably wouldn't wear white simply because white could get dirty, right? Let's just keep it real. But if you want to wear a pair of black pants, oh, look, Chloe has come. Hi, Chloe. Hello. If you want to wear a pair of black pants that are not actual pants and are actual jeans, I will wear jeans that are comfortable, right? Jeans that are comfortable for you, whatever that looks like, whether you are comfortable in a 100% cotton pair of jeans or if you need some elastane in your jeans. Me personally, I need elastane and some type of lycra in my jeans in order to help them stretch. This pair of jeans that I'm showing you guys here they are they have an enormous amount of stretch and i absolutely love them um i can bend down in them i could drop it like it's hot in them like those are the types of pants that you want to be able to cook in some of my jeans are more comfortable than others so you want to pick a pair of jeans that you can actually move around in ones that you can drop it like it's hot in ones that are going to be comfortable you know the c word that you guys love so much so it's not that you can't wear jeans on Thanksgiving. I know I gave you guys a whole bunch of more dressier looks, right? But if you have a more casual laid back Thanksgiving attire for your Thanksgiving, that's great too. Just think through the things that I've already explained, right? Are they comfortable? What kind of top are you gonna wear with it? Is the top gonna be functional? And is the outfit going to make some sort of a statement, right? because we always wanna make a statement one way or another. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you, thank you, thank you. I so appreciate you. I love to hear your comments on what you guys wear when you're cooking Thanksgiving dinner or what your process is. 
I usually get dressed maybe like an hour before I expect guests to arrive so that if anybody gets there early, they don't catch me in my sweats and my t-shirt <laughs> just to be on top of things in an advance. Or if dinner by some miracle is ready, then I can go wear something that I, I don't have to put in all of this extra thought about the sleeves and the length and how it fits and all of the things, right? But if I'm cooking, these are some of the things that go into play as far as outfit creation before I actually hit the kitchen. So I hope you guys have a fabulous and wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. And I love to hear your comments. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.